Hi, and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the structure of a synapse. You should then be able to describe the process of synaptic transmission across a cholinergic synapse. Now, synapses is a relatively large topic, so I've split this over several videos. In later videos, we look at the functions of synapses, including summation and inhibitor synapses. So far on this topic, we've looked at how neurons function. We've seen that neurons transmit an electrical impulse in the form of an action potential. Now, a key idea you need to understand is that neurons interact with each other. For example, in this diagram, we can see a sensory neuron, a relay or intermediate neuron, and a motor neuron. The region where two neurons interact is called a synapse, and we can see the synapses here between the sensory neuron and the relay neuron. Now, the two neurons are not touching at the synapse. In fact, at the synapse, there's a gap between the two neurons. The role of synapses is to transmit information from one neuron to another. Imagine that an electrical impulse is passing down the sensory neuron. When the impulse reaches the synapse, a chemical is released. This chemical is called a neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter diffuses across the gap to the relay neuron. Once the neurotransmitter reaches the relay neuron, it can trigger an electrical impulse. In this video, we're going to look at the structure of synapses and what happens during synaptic transmission. I'm showing you here the structure of a synapse. At the top, we have the axon of the presynaptic neuron. So, for example, this could be at the end of a sensory neuron. This ends in the synaptic knob. And at the bottom, we have the membrane of the postsynaptic neuron. So this could be a relay neuron or a motor neuron. In between the presynaptic and postsynaptic neurons, we have a narrow gap called the synaptic cleft. Looking at the synaptic knob, we can see that this contains a large number of vesicles. These vesicles contain neurotransmitter. Now, there are several different neurotransmitters. The synapse that we're looking at uses the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. So we would call this a cholinergic synapse. A cholinergic synapse is an excitatory synapse. In other words, acetylcholine triggers an action potential in the postsynaptic neuron. In later videos, we'll be looking at other neurotransmitters and you will see that other neurotransmitters can inhibit an action potential in the postsynaptic neuron. The synaptic knob also contains mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum is where the neurotransmitter is produced using ATP from the mitochondria. We also have voltage-gated calcium ion channels in the membrane of the synaptic knob. On the postsynaptic membrane, we have sodium ion channels. I'm showing you here a close-up of these sodium ion channels. The key thing to remember is that these sodium ion channels have binding sites for acetylcholine molecules. OK, so let's look now at what happens during synaptic transmission. First, an action potential arrives at the presynaptic neuron. This triggers the voltage-gated calcium ion channels to open. Calcium ions now diffuse into the synaptic knob. The increased concentration of calcium ions in the synaptic knob triggers the vesicles to fuse with the presynaptic membrane, and acetylcholine is released into the synaptic cleft. The acetylcholine now diffuses across the synaptic cleft and binds with the sodium ion channels on the membrane of the postsynaptic neuron. This triggers the sodium ion channels to open. Sodium ions now diffuse into the postsynaptic neuron. And this influx of sodium ions triggers an action potential in the postsynaptic neuron. Now, if the acetylcholine remained attached to the sodium ion channels, then it could trigger multiple action potentials. So now the enzyme acetylcholinesterase hydrolyzes the acetylcholine to choline and ethanoic acid. The choline and ethanoic acid re enter the presynaptic neuron. Energy from ATP is used to recycle the choline and ethanoic acid back to acetylcholine. The acetylcholine is then stored in the vesicles to be used again. Finally, in the absence of acetylcholine, the sodium ion channels in the postsynaptic membrane close. 
In the next video, we look at the functions of synapses, including summation.